Hey fellow workers, my name's Kim Siever. Welcome back to my channel. One of the most common responses I get from people when I talk about business owners stealing worker wages to accumulate wealth, particularly billionaires, is that the business's success is reliant on the owner, that they built the company and their efforts should be rewarded, even if it's exorbitantly. Let's explore this. For the purposes of illustration, we'll say our hypothetical business owner has a knack for chair building and decides to quit his job as an investment broker to build chairs full time. Things work out well and before he knows it, he's making a lot of chairs and bringing in quite a bit of money. After he pays for his materials, operational costs, workshop rent, marketing, and whatnot, he gets to keep everything that's left over. However, it isn't long until the demand grows so much that he can no longer build chairs fast enough without sacrificing quality. Even if he works 16 hour days, he finds that he can make only five chairs a day, but he needs to make more than that to keep up with demand. So he hires another chair maker. And in short time, the two of them are pumping out 10 chairs a day, with each of them making five a day. But now he has another expense to factor in, the wages of the other chair maker. And he pretty much has two options. He can split the difference down the middle after all the other expenses are paid, or he can see the other chair maker's wage as another expense, paying a set rate, and then keeping whatever's left over after all the expenses. The problem with the latter option is that the owner is now getting what's left over after all expenses, including wages, for 10 chairs. The same leftover amount from his five, plus any leftover amount after paying out wages to the other chair maker. He's getting more even though he's pretty much performing the same amount of labor as before, other than some marginal increases in fielding phone calls from new customers. Which brings me to the next evolution of the business. Word gets out about the high quality chairs and demand starts increasing even more. The owner has to hire two more chair makers, one to take over from him, He's having to coordinate with suppliers, vendors, and customers, and is finding it hard to build chairs too, and one to help with the increasing demand. Now he has three chair makers, all being paid the same wage for their labor, and he's pocketing what revenue is left over from paying all expenses, including wages for the chair makers. Demand keeps increasing, so he keeps increasing his team, more chair builders, bookkeeping staff, sales and marketing staff, maintenance staff, and so on. And before he knows it, he's no longer building chairs, no longer dealing with customers, no longer coordinating with suppliers and vendors. Now he's focused on things like strategy and planning. He no longer gets all the profit though because the shop is getting too small and he needs to set some of it aside for a new place or maybe a second one and some new equipment as the current equipment is getting worn out. Even though he's not getting all the profit, he's still getting a large chunk of it and certainly more than he was taking off the top when he was the only chair maker, despite no longer actually being directly involved in the customer's purchase. When the the customer pays for a chair, what does she think she's paying for? The chair itself, made by the chair maker. The pleasant phone calls and follow-up emails, made by the sales staff. The well-lit parking lot and clean reception area, made possible by the maintenance workers. Does she think she's paying for the strategy and planning? Probably not. And when the procurement team manages to reduce material costs through bulk discounts, thereby increasing profits, does the owner use it to increase worker wages without having to increase product prices? When the owner automates some of the processes, allowing workers to build eight chairs per day instead of five without having to work harder, does he increase their wages to match the additional revenue created each day? Or does he keep their wages the same because they still have an eight hour shift? When it comes down to it, those workers are the ones who built those chairs and customers buying those chairs are what built that business. Did the owner contribute to the business? Of course. Enough to warrant significantly more than ones building the actual products the customers are buying? Thanks for watching. Thanks to all these subscribers and Patreon patrons who make this video possible. Please visit my website at kimseaver.ca. You can also follow me on social media. Just search for Kim Seaver on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Tumblr, and LinkedIn. If you appreciate the videos I post here on YouTube, the news stories and opinion pieces I write on my news site, or the content I share on my other social media accounts, please become a monthly supporter at kimseaver.ca slash support. If you agree with the points I raise in my video, please give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below why. Please share my video, subscribe to my channel, and please click on the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Solidarity.